All right, in this video, I'm going to give you the ultimate guide to SEO headings and subheadings. So the H1, H2, H3 tags and so on. I'm going to go into what they are. I'm going to explain what the benefits of them are and why you need them. And I'm also going to show you exactly how to write them and give you some examples of how I would write them so that you can use the same thing for your website. So what are headings and subheadings? So a heading, which is also sometimes referred to as a header, an H1 title, an H1 tag, and there might be a couple other names for it, is the main headline on a page of your website. So on any page of the website, it's usually the headline that you see in, at the top of the page written in the biggest font, although it doesn't necessarily have to be. It looks something like this. So this is an example from my website. You can see this is the main headline if you were to go on my website, and that is the H1 heading on my website. Now, this is called the H1 heading because the HTML code of that heading is H1. And this is a format of code that puts text on the page in a hierarchy of importance. And I'm going to go into this in a little bit to explain what that means. Now, here's a quick example. You can see if you inspect the code of my website, you can see it's the H1 heading when you highlight this one. You can see it shows it there and it shows it here in the code as well. So that's what that means. Now, subheadings, which are also called subheaders, subtitles, they can be H2, H3 tags, and so on. These are the subheadings which are placed throughout the article or throughout the page in your content, and they look something like this. So you'd have like content, 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 then you'd have like a subheading, and then content under that. Now, as with the H1 headings, these are called H2 and H3, etc., due to the fact that that's the HTML format, which goes all the way up to H6. So you can see here again, if you inspect the code on the website, you can see here it says H2 and it says H2 here in the code as well when you highlight that H2 headline. So that's what they are. Now, why are these headings important for SEO? So headings are important for SEO because they tell Google what your page is actually about. So like I mentioned earlier, these are a way to structure the hierarchy of the text and the content on your website. And so what happens is Google looks at what keywords are in the headings, especially the H1 and the H2 headings, to determine what the content on that page is actually about. And then it ranks it accordingly, obviously in combination with all the other SEO factors as well. Now, you also have to remember that you're competing with all the other websites trying to rank for the same keywords on the internet. And so if they have the headings with all the keywords in them and you don't, what's going to happen is you're just going to be less relevant in the eyes of Google and you're just not going to rank above them. It's as simple as that. So that's why they're important. Now, how important are H1 tags specifically for SEO? So that's the main one at the top. Now, in my opinion, they're extremely important, and I think anyone else who does SEO will actually agree with that. H1 headings are one of what I call the three pillars of SEO, which are H1 headings being one of them, URLs and meta titles being the other two. These three are what I consider the three most important things on your website when it comes to at least on-page SEO. And basically the reason why is because without an H1 headline or one of the other two as well, that contains your main keyword, you're just going to have a very hard time ranking for anything. It will be borderline impossible, basically. So basically, every other website on the internet that has an H1 headline with the keyword in it is going to rank above you. So that's why they're a crucial aspect of SEO that must not be overlooked if you actually want to be on page one of Google. Hey guys, real quick, if you want to add at least $100,000 to $300,000 per year in new business guaranteed or you literally don't pay, go to dominatemarketing.io to book a call with us and we'll show you exactly how we'll do that for you. Back to the video. So what are the benefits of headings and subheadings? So headings and subheadings allow you to place the keywords that you want to rank for strategically in your content in such a way that Google's going to consider your page relevant for these particular keywords. So if you include long tail keywords in an H2 heading, you're far more likely to rank for that keyword than if you don't have an H2 at all, or if you didn't put that long tail variation keyword in anywhere in your page in the headings. So they also make the content easier to read and more structured for the user, which increases the chances that they're gonna stay on the page and take the action you want, which actually indirectly helps your ranking since engagement is now a ranking factor as well. So the more you can get people to stay on your page and actually engage with the website, you know, click a button, take an action, whatever, the more likely you are to actually rank now. So that's how that helps as well. 
So how do you actually write headings and subheadings? So there's two things that I would recommend you always do when you write headings and subheadings. So number one is to look up the main keyword in a tool like SEMrush to get all the keyword variations that you need to include on that page within the different headings. So I'm going to put a link, which is an affiliate link, I'm being transparent with you, in the description below the video to SEMrush. The reason why I'm doing this is because I recommend SEMrush because I use it personally. It's a really good tool. So if you click that link, it doesn't cost you anything, but I'll earn a bit of a commission if you sign up. So just be aware of that. And the second point is go to page one on Google and see what the websites that are already ranking are doing. And this is going to give you a really good idea of what you should also be doing to get your website to actually rank. And it's not even only just for headings, it's for basically anything. Everything you need to know is basically on page one. I've spoken about this in my other videos. So that's why you should always do that. So this is going to tell you exactly what you need to do when it comes to writing the headline. There are also a couple of simple rules that you can follow when it comes to writing the headings and subheadings that I'm going to increase your chances of ranking. So this is the list here of best practices. So I'll just go through them quickly with you. Firstly, you need to make sure that you actually have a H1 heading on every page on your website. Now I'm emphasizing this because I still see many websites that don't actually have it. They have a main headline, but it's an H2 headline or something like that. It's not actually an H1 headline and that's a major problem in terms of SEO. You're gonna have a hard time ranking if, if you rank at all. So make sure you check the code and just be 100% certain that you actually have one. Now, H1 headings must contain the main keyword that you actually wanna rank for if you wanna rank for that keyword. If it doesn't contain the main keyword, you're probably not gonna rank. Now, H2 headings should have the long tail keyword variations and support the main heading. So they need to be on the same topic. You don't want to have H2 headings that are talking about something completely different that has nothing to do with the H1 headline. That's not going to help you. In fact, it's probably just going to do damage. Now, all the headings on your page must follow the hierarchy. So what that means is you never want to have an H4 heading without having the H3 heading above it. Or for instance, you don't want to have an H3 heading without an H2 above it. So you don't want to have like H1 and then H3 or H1 and then H4 with, without the other two in the middle because that's just, that, it's just confusing for Google and it's not a good look either. So you want to make sure that they're always in the order H1, H2, H3, H4, then back to H2, then H3, for example. So again, the subheadings need to support the heading above it and that applies for like the H3 to the H2 as well all of which should be supporting the H1 headline being on context and on relevant content to that page. It needs to be relevant to what you're talking about. There should only be one H1 headline per page. So don't have multiple H1 headlines throughout the content. That's not going to help you. In fact, that can make things worse. So make sure you only have one. And the last thing is you only usually really need to have H1, H2 and H3. In some rare cases, you might need H4, but I've never really had a case where I needed H5 or H6. If you do, then there's no reason not to use them as long as they are in the hierarchical order I described. So now let's go into examples of writing these headlines. So here's a couple of examples I've put together of how I would write headlines and sub headlines for a, a few examples of a few different pages. So in order to write the headings properly, you will need to have done your keyword research and know which keywords you're actually targeting with each page. So you don't want to cause keyword cannibalization by having multiple pages with the same keywords because that's going to do you more harm than good. So I've made videos on both keyword research, which I'm going to put up in the card above and keyword cannibalization. I'm going to put that above as well now. So if you haven't watched those, go and watch them first and then come back to this step if you're doing this as you're watching this video because you're going to need to know about those two things and have completed them before you can write the headlines properly. I would also highly recommend, as I mentioned earlier in the video, to get a tool like SEMrush, which is going to help you with this process so that you can actually see which keywords you should be targeting with your headings. And like I said, there's going to be an affiliate link below in the description if you want to get SEMrush. So... First example is family lawyer in Sydney. So let's say it's a law firm. We're making a page about family law specifically and, and their family lawyer in Sydney. The first thing I would do is go to SEMrush and type in the main keyword and see what results we get. Again, you should have already done this at the keyword stage, but it doesn't hurt to also do it as you are writing the headline. So I'm going to go quickly and show you what that would look like in SEMrush. So now I'm in SEMrush. I'm going to type in family lawyer Sydney and just see what results we get. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna spit out 
I just need to select the correct country, make sure you do that. What it's gonna do now is it's gonna spit out all the keyword variations and related keywords to this. So for instance, we've got Family Lawyer Sydney, obviously that's the main keyword, but now you've got Top Family Lawyers in Sydney, Family Lawyer Sydney, Best Family Lawyer in Sydney, if you go down here as well, you've got a couple others. Expert Family Lawyer Sydney, Family Court Lawyer Sydney. So keep this in mind and we'll go back to the document. So here's a screenshot of exactly what I just showed you in SEMrush. So like I said, you can see that Family Lawyer Sydney is the main keyword that gets the most searches. So that would be the main keyword to go for here in the H1 headline. So in this case, the H1 heading for that I would write for this page would be something along the lines of Family Lawyers in Sydney. You want to make sure that you have those keywords in the main headline. Now, you could get more creative with it and have something like speak to our Family Lawyers in Sydney today. This would be perfectly fine because it still contains the main keywords, Family Lawyers Sydney, but it's also more interesting to read and more engaging for the user, so that would probably actually be better. Now, now we've got the main heading. Now we need to write the subheadings, okay? So what you wanna do is take a look at the keywords in the screenshot above, and you can see a few other words popping up like best, expert, family court, and so on that I mentioned as we were looking through them. So what I would do is I would use these keywords to write the H2 headings on the page and make sure that they are included in all of the headings. So here are a couple of examples of what the H2 headings could look like on this page. You could have one that would be, we are the best family lawyers in Sydney, and that includes the keyword best, how our expert family lawyers can help you with the keyword expert, can our Sydney lawyers represent you in family court, that contains the keyword family court and family lawyer, or family court lawyer, and how much do family lawyers cost? That's one of the questions that was in here as well. You can see here, how much do family lawyers cost Sydney? And you can just directly target the question in many cases with the H2 headline. So these all contain the keyword variations and will increase your chances of ranking for each of these variations because they're on your page. Now, this is just an example based on the keywords in that screenshot. You would obviously want to go through the whole list by clicking see all keywords and it's going to spit out a big list and you want to pick out all the different variations of that that are worth targeting and i'm going to show you an example of that in one of the next examples so second example plumber miami let's do the same thing but with plumber miami being the main keyword so again i've thrown it into semrush this is the screenshot of what semrush gave me the results you can see that plumber miami is obviously the main keyword here but you can also see that miami plumbing also gets a decent amount of search volume. So in this case, I would actually try and get both of these keywords in the H1 headline since they're so similar, they're almost the same keyword and they both get a decent amount of searches. So in this case, you could do something like this. ABC Plumbing, if the name of the uh, company has the word plumbing in it, you could use that in the headline, have ABC Plumbing and then dash your local Miami plumber. So now what you have is you've got the keyword plumber, plumbing, and Miami in the H1 headline, and it reads much more interestingly than if you just had plumber in Miami. Now, for the H2 headlines, you could do something like this. Emergency plumber in Miami, we offer A to Z plumbing services, and now this is a clever way to get the other company's name into our headline without technically using their company name, if that makes sense, and increases the chances you'll actually rank for that. Now, another one is why are we Miami's top plumbing company? Because like top Miami plumber, and call our Miami Beach plumbers today because I wanted to get Miami Beach in there. So again, these are examples of H2 headlines you could use that are relevant to the topic of the page and contain all these variations. And these are gonna significantly increase the chances that you rank for all these different keywords. So now let's do one more example. HVAC company in Houston, Texas. So let's type in HVAC Houston, Texas and see what we get. Now here's an example of the bigger list that SEMrush gives us. So I'm just gonna show you that in SEMrush specifically. So what you would do is you would type in HVAC Houston, Texas and SEMrush as you can see here and then you would click keyword magic tool and what that's going to do is it's going to show you a large list of all the related keywords here. So that this is what I screenshotted. You can see how it's got all these different variations. HVAC cleaning, HVAC contractor, commercial, it's got company, it's got repair, service, we've got supply and all these other ones, caps and some other things here. Now obviously I'm only using a couple for the example but you would want to go through this list see what are relevant installers. I just saw one installation installers. You would want to go through this list and pick out which ones are actually relevant to the specific page you're making and then go with those. So you can see in this list that you've got company is a variation that pops up the most because it comes up a few times companies here 
and then we've got companies, company, companies. So what I would do is put that one for this particular page in the H1 headline because it's so common. So for example, what I would put here is Houston's top HVAC company. That could be the H1 headline. It includes Houston, it includes HVAC, and it includes company. And then that would increase the chances that you rank for these keywords you know, significantly. And then for the H2s, you could have something like HVAC cleaning service in Houston, Texas, HVAC repair in Houston, Texas, commercial HVAC services. Why are we the best HVAC contractors in Houston? And that's taking care of all of those. And remember, if we scroll down, there was also installation and things like that. So you could have like HVAC installers in Houston as well as another example. So th those are some examples of what you could use in this particular case. So that's really all you need to know for headings. If you follow everything that I've shown you here in this guide, you're going to have better headings and subheadings than almost every other website on the internet and are very, very likely to rank as long as you do all the other SEO factors properly as well. So I hope you found this video helpful. This is actually part of an SEO course that I have on YouTube. So if you haven't watched all that and you want to do SEO on your website, I'm going to put a link in the description so you can watch all my SEO videos and it will show you all the different aspects you need to do. So if you like this, I would appreciate it if you liked and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.